So now we've got a visit a variety of electron donating groups and electron withdrawing groups. And uh, as mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, for an EAS reaction, benzene's the nucleophile, and it's these electron donating groups in blue that make him a better nucleophile and more reactive in EAS reactions. So for EAS reactions, these electron donating groups are activating groups, and for uh, and these electron withdrawing groups are deactivating groups. Now for NAS, it's the exact opposite, but we're really going to focus on the EAS right now. Uh, so in this case, look at what you got here for all the electron donating groups. You either got uh, a nitrogen with a lone pair or an oxygen with a lone pair. Uh, that kind of thing going on, that's the case. Uh, and in this case, nitrogen's more donating than oxygen because nitrogen's less electronegative, so it doesn't hold on to his electrons as much. Uh, and this nitrogen here, he could donate his electrons towards the benzene ring, but he could also donate his electrons towards the carbonyl on the other side. So he's not as donating as just a regular amine uh, in this case. So uh, just one thing to keep in mind there. Then you've also got uh, just plain old alkyl groups or aryl groups. Uh, and these aren't usually donating so much by resonance, although it could be a, the case with an aryl group. But uh, in this case, by hyperconjugation, the uh, intermediate in these reactions are carbocation. And uh, tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary. And alkyl groups are just, you know, uh, sigma donors, we say, or S donors, as is the case may be here. Um, cool, that's the big deal. You should realize uh, and, and again recognize. Uh, your donating groups and know that they're activating in these EAS reactions. Uh, then you've got your electron withdrawing groups and your halogens are the least withdrawing and then any kind of carbonyl. And then after that you've got a whole host of different groups. Now if you look at the NO2 group here, there's a positive formal charge right on the nitrogen or on the NR3 group. Uh, and so you got a big fat positive formal charge on the atom directly attached to the ring. Uh, but here with the carbon nitrogen triple bond you've got a partially positive uh, atom attached in a very significant amount. Here, sulfur is bonded to three oxygen, so he's partially positive. Same thing with all these carbonyls that are moderate withdrawing groups. They're all partially positive, and so when the atom directly attached to your benzene ring has a partial positive charge or a full positive formal charge, those are your electron withdrawing groups. Uh, and you kind of want to memorize these classes. So halogens, the least withdrawing, then carbonyls, and then all the rest of these are your strong withdrawings, and you should kind of have that general ranking in your head. Uh, so if we go from there, question at the bottom of the page here says, which the following, or rank, sorry, the following in descending order of reactivity in an EAS reaction. So first thing I'm going to do is just recognize whether they're donating or withdrawing. Now, oxygen with lone pairs, that's a donating group. That's an OR group there. Uh, and then also just a regular old alkyl group. That's just an R group. So that's also a donating group. So, but the rest of these, so here we got bromine. That's a withdrawing group. We've got a carbonyl carbon here. So in this case, the ketone, that's a withdrawing group. And then we've got the NO2 group right here where the nitrogen's got a positive formal charge, and that's a withdrawing group. And again, if we draw that NO2 group out, you'll find that nitrogen does not have a lone pair. It has a full positive formal charge. So don't mistake the NO2 for one of these NH2s or NR2s over here. Cool. So if we look then, if we're ranking these in descending order, we've got two donating groups, and the OR is more donating than the just plain old R group. So he's number one, and he's number two. So and the rest are all withdrawing groups, and they slowly uh, reactions around. They raise the activation energy, it turns out. Uh, and in this case, the least withdrawing is next, and that's the halogen. So And then one of the carbonyls is fourth. And then your strong withdrawing group, the NO2 group, he's going to be the slowest in an EAS reaction, and he's fifth. Uh, so the big thing here is that your donating groups lower the activation energy speed, EAS reactions up. Electron withdrawing groups raise the activation energy and slow it down. We kind of have this general ranking now. So now we want to take a closer look at the ortho pair directors. And uh, all your electron donating groups are ortho pair directors, and then the halogens are electron, uh, even though they're electron withdrawing, are ortho pair directors. Uh, let's take a look at why they're ortho pair directors. Now, if we look at something like a hydroxyl group, a typical or, uh, electron donating group that's also an ortho pair director here, we can see by resonance stabilization, so we can kick these electrons out here, and then we see that partial negative charge there, and then we can move these here and move these out here to get the rest, next resonance structure, and then move these here and kick the pi electrons out to get this last resonance structure. And so the big thing here is that relative to the OH, the ortho and para carbons are all partially negative. And so they're more electron rich than the metacarbons, and more electron rich means better nucleophilicity. And so that's one way of looking at why an OH group and the rest of the ortho pair directors, why they're ortho pair directors is they raise the electron density on the ortho and para carbons, making them more nucleophilic there. Uh, but the other way to look at this is, uh, and equally as valid, is to look at how it stabilizes the intermediate instead. And if we stabilize that intermediate, we can get a lower activation energy and form in it. Uh, and in this case, 
first thing that happens in these uh, EAS reactions here is let's just say we add to we're going to add to this ortho carbon right here the electrophile so that's going to leave a carbocation right here and the first resonant structure and then we can move around the chain here uh, get the carbocation here and then move around the chain here get the carbocation here and then we can also dump electrons in here so to share the positive charge on the oxygen now here's the deal here only had we added the electrophile either to the either of the ortho carbons or either of the pericarbons that's the only way that the partial positive charge would have ended up on the carbon next to the OH. And that's the only reason we got a chance to do this extra resonant structure and get this one right here. And this is the major resonance contributor. So you're saying positive on oxygen, that's better than a positive on carbon? Uh, and in this case it is. In this structure, every atom, including oxygen, has a filled octet. Whereas for all the rest of these, carbon does not have a filled octet here, here, or here. And so this is actually the superior structure, the more stable structure, even with the positive charge on the more electronegative atoms. So that's your major resonance contributor. So in this case, this is significantly more reactive, so phenol, than plain old benzene. We're not just getting one more resonant structure, now we have four than three. We're getting one significantly better resonant structure than any of the ones that we've had before. Uh, so whether you want to look at this being an ortho pair director, either by showing that you have increased electron density in the reactant on the ortho and pair carbon, so they're more nucleophilic, or that we can stabilize the intermediate with an initial resonant structure only if the electrophile adds ortho para. That's kind of the deal. But uh, it turns out that these ortho para directors activate, uh, being electron donating, they activate the ortho, meta, and para positions. But they activate the meta only a little bit. They activate the ortho and para a lot. So I want to take one quick look back at these ortho para directors here, and that's the line highlighted in green here and again it's either an oxygen like we just had or a nitrogen with a lone pair uh, or again it could just be an R group. Now the R group is not so much about uh, we can't really show anything for the reactant, but we will show that when we add ortho para, one of the uh, carbocation resonant structures will be tertiary instead of just secondary, and that's where the stabilization occurs. Uh, and then finally, you've got the halogens, and the halogens are the big exceptions on the table here. So your halogens, even though they're electron withdrawing, are still ortho para directors, and the idea is that they're electronegative, and so inductively they're withdrawing. But because they have lone pairs, they can donate by resonance. Well, it turns out they're more withdrawing than they donate. So over the, they're withdrawing groups. But they only get a chance to donate by resonance if we go ortho or para, same as nitrogen and oxygen. So that's what makes them ortho para directors. So they still react slower than plain old benzene, but they're still going to be ortho para directors as well. So if you notice outside of these halogens, all the electron donating groups are ortho para directors, and all the other electron withdrawing groups are meta directors, the halogens are the exceptions. They're the only electron withdrawing groups that are meta directors. So now we're going to take a closer look at the meta directors. So, and these are uh, all electron withdrawing groups uh, in this case. So, the, again, the only electron withdrawing groups that aren't meta directors are the halogens, but all the ones we'll look at here that are meta directors will be electron withdrawing groups. And we use the NO2 group as my example here. And we can see that it's electron withdrawing here on nitrobenzene. We can pull the electrons out and push electrons out to the oxygen to get this resonant structure and we can get the next resonant structure by pushing electrons there and then we can get the next resonant structure by pushing the electrons there. And what you find that relative to the uh, nitro group is that we've got a partial positive charge on the ortho and para carbons. So and having that partial positive charge means there's less electron density which means less nucleophilicity. So they're weaker nucleophiles on the ortho and para positions. And it, it turns out the nitro group being electron withdrawing both inductively and by resonance here, uh, it actually reduces the electron density on the ortho, meta, and para carbons, all of them, but the meta just a little on the ortho and para a lot. And so as a result, it's a lot weaker nucleophile on the ortho and para, only a little weaker on the meta. And so it's not that meta is so good, it's just that ortho and para are so bad. That's what makes it a meta director here. Uh, the other way we can look at this, though, is we can look at what would happen, uh, not if we added meta, but what would happen if we added ortho and para. So in this case, I'm going to add ortho to our electrophile here, and we look at where that... Uh, where the positive charge is going to be shared. I can move the electrons here to get that one. I can move these here. And this is the bad structure. This is what I wanted to avoid. I have got the positive charge on a carbon right next to the electron withdrawing group. If you substitute uh, your electrophile ortho or para, that's what's going to happen. It's very bad. Whereas if you go meta, the positive charge will never end up right next to the electron withdrawing group. So it's not quite as unstable. Uh, but putting the electron uh, withdrawing group right next to the positive charge really destabilizes the structure here. So again, it's not that meta is so good, it's that ortho and para here are so bad. 
Now one of the ortho paradirectors we have to take a special look at are amines. And here we'll just look at simple aniline, but this could in principle happen for any amine. Uh, and basically amines are known as your organic bases, right? We don't have to worry about this with like alcohol, so in phenols case or anything like that. So uh, don't have to worry about this with the other ortho paradirectors, but with amines we do, they are bases and bases react with acids. And whether that's simple, just, you know, a simple bronsted acid in here getting protonated, or whether that's a Lewis acid here, like aluminum chloride, uh, in either case, nitrogen's gonna end up with a positive formal charge. And with a positive formal charge, he's no longer an activating group, he's a deactivating group. And he's also no longer an ortho paradirector. If a reaction happens, and sometimes it doesn't, uh, but if it does, he'd end up being a meta director instead. So this is kind of problematic. So in this case, if I wanna do a reaction here with amino benzene, like let's say I just want to do a chlorination. So normally we'd add Cl2 and AlCl3. There's supposed to be an L there. So, and we'd be expecting with the amine group being an ortho para director, expect some ortho product, but we'd also expect some para product here as well. But the problem is with that AlCl3. So with the AlCl3 there, it's going to react just like we saw right down here. Uh, and as a result, we're not going to get this ortho para uh, directing ability from the amine group like we normally expect. But the other side of the coin is he's the best activating group we typically study. And so as a result, it turns out the AlCl3, the Lewis acid catalyst, is not actually even required here. We don't even need the catalyst. So what we'll do is we'll just add plain old Cl2. We'll get rid of the AlCl3 entirely and the reaction still goes. Uh, so with amines in particular, we usually leave out the catalyst when, when possible anyways, uh, and get the reaction to still go and still have the amine group be an ortho para director. Just something to be familiar with.